Hey there! In this tutorial I'm going to show you how I can create this semi-procedural ground material. I'm saying semi-procedural because the leaves themselves are photo-scanned textures and these roots lying around are also textures but the underlying mud and the overall composition of the textures is completely procedural. And as you might already have guessed, I'm using scatter for the placement of the leaves. I mean, it's in the title of the video, so there's no reward for guessing that right. Sorry. As usual, you can get the files through the link in the description. This is going to be a longer, more in-depth tutorial, unlike the previous ones. And I'm actually pretty excited for it, because that's basically what I had in mind when I created scatter. For our PBR material here, we're going to create an albedo map or a diffuse map, a height map, a roughness map, and a normal map. And there will be no modeling at all involved, as you can see this is just a single plane. Alright, let's get started. Unlike when I initially created this material to test out scatter, we are going to approach this thing in an organized fashion. So let's get ourselves a nice and muddy base ground. Nothing revolutionary here really, I'm just going to get a noise texture and add in a color ramp to control the topology. The trick here is to create a cutoff to complete black. These zones are going to be the puddles. From this grayscale texture, we are later going to generate the different channels of our PBR material. I'd actually like to focus on the height first. We are going to use micro displacement. To enable that, we have to first switch to experimental mode in the render tab and give our plane a subsurf modifier. Make sure to enable adaptive here. What micro displacement does is basically that it tessellates your plane dependent on the size it takes up in your render. That is extremely useful to create realism with displacement. Now, I'm here in Blender 2.8 and that means that the displacement is no longer a value but a vector. I'm not going to make use of that feature in the tutorial, but I'm going to work around it. I want the displacement to always be in the direction of the normal vector. To achieve that, I can just multiply my height map with that normal vector. If I now just press render, you can already see that the micro displacing is happening. It is obviously way too strong right now. Now we can just adapt the height map that we have till we get the result that we want. I'm doing that by just adding a few math and color ramp node and trying what looks best. Here you can also just try out different effects like the earth crackling up or tiny blobs of mud and I don't know. Just be creative and try different things. I'm going to leave it at that now though. I don't want the node tree to get completely chaotic. Next we are going to generate a color map out of our grayscale texture. I'm just going to add in a color ramp node and make the puddles really dark and the little hills a bit brighter. Now for the roughness, I'm actually going to add another color ramp and just give the black value a tiny offset and adjust the white value as well and just drag them around until I get the result I want. Now for the normal map, I'm really only going to use the bump node that actually gives a decent result, and we're going to use micro displacement anyways, so the normal isn't that important. And that's the mud done. Let's get a bit organized here, so we don't forget what we did here later on. Okay, now for the more exciting part. Let's load in these leaf textures that I told you about. I actually photo scanned them myself, so they are free to use. What we have here are three different leaves with a color and a height map for each one. So let's boot up three instances of scatter. Now let me tell you, 
as much as I would have loved to blow up the whole place with leaves floating around everywhere. Using scatter is really heavy on the node tree. So my first implementation with more than one leaf crashed completely. I hope Cycles is going to be more capable of really complex shaders in the future, but for now we are going to use a single scatter for the leaves again. That is not a huge restriction, but yeah, it makes me sad. Whatever, okay, let's plug in these maps. Of course, we'll have to do some basic settings like random size, random rotation, random offset, and change the seed value for each instance. Next, we have to do some dirty work. First, we have to combine all these alpha channels with their clipping mask and line those up here because we are going to need them a bunch of times. Because now we are going to combine all the channels that we need later, which are going to be the color, the alpha, the height map, random 1 and random 2, and also a Z index, which will give us the information which leaves are stacked on top. We are just going to generate that one by multiplying the alpha mask of each instance by a different value. Now, the principle is always the same, so I'm going to treat you with a montage here. Alright, now that we're done with our chores, we can now go ahead and use the textures of all the leaves together as one. So that'll make everything easier in the future. Now that we can see what we are doing, we should adjust some of the settings again. It's a good idea here to use different division counts for the different leaf types, otherwise they will use the same grid and it will look really repetitive. It's also a good idea to set the interpolation mode of our textures to closest. That will get rid of the edges that you can see. I should probably mention that I'm intentionally not cutting away these extra parts. I don't want to use a uniform background, because that would give me seams later on. Okay, so let's integrate the leaves into the PBR channels that we use. For the colors, I want to give a little bit of variation, so for that I'm going to use the two random channels that we prepared. Let's get another color ramp in here to alter the hue. And also a little bit of variation in the saturation of the colors. For the roughness of the leaves, I'm going to use another color ramp. Of course, if you have the actual roughness map of the texture that you're using, you can also use that one. But I'm just going to generate it out of the color channel here. Same thing for the bump map. I know it says height here, but I'm just going to use the color information because that gives me a lot more detail. Remember the z-index that we prepared earlier? That's for the height map. If we just multiply that in here, the leaves on top will actually have a little bit more height to them. Okay, now the more tricky part. The integration onto the mud. I don't just want to slap those leaves onto the mud like a barbarian. I want them to be part of the material, covered in dirt, floating in the puddles like doves in the wind. You get the point, but how do I do that? Well, I'm just going to add in another noise texture with a little bit of distortion this time. And I'm going to use that to control how much mud is on the leaves. Now, we have to acknowledge that this affects all the channels of the PBR material that we're creating. 
but let's just start with the color for now. The leaves are transparent to a specific point, so I want the mud to be showing in general. Then also I want the leaves to be stuck in the mud, so there should be some points where they are completely textured by the mud material. And in the puddles I want them to be showing slightly, but really dark. So, now that we know what we want to achieve, just let's add a mix node and try some stuff with that factor here. I'll just take the alpha mask of the leaves, multiply the noise texture that we just created, and add in a few color ramp nodes. As you can see, it looks like the leaves are partly covered with mud. For the roughness, the height, and the bump map, I'm just gonna tweak that with a color ramp and use that as the factor. And I always need to combine it with the alpha mask. For the height map, I have to set the mode of the mix node to add though, because I want the leaves to lay on top of the mud and not be completely uncorrelated to its topology. If you added in details to the mud, like cracks in the earth, you should deactivate those for the spots where the leaves are lying actually, because they wouldn't be showing on top of the leaves. We're going to do the same thing with the roots later. Okay, now let's take a step back and take a look at what we've done. Wow, isn't that glorious? It wouldn't be a realistic material without some random stuff lying around though. The natural idea here would of course be to add in some empty cans and bags of trash, but Let's add in some roots instead. I want to use those just to give some variation in the height map. So, let's jump into a second instance of Blender and sculpt some height maps. That's actually really easy to do. We just add in a plane and sculpt around with dynamic topology turned on. Sorry if my PC is lagging a bit and I have to make cuts on the resolution, but that's just the recording software and several instances of Blender at the same time, you know, and everything's a bit slower. Of course, you could do some really amazingly realistic stuff here, but I'm lazy, so I'm just gonna draw some lines. There you go. To export these as height maps now, we have to first add in a new camera and set it into orthographic mode. We can just press Alt-R to get the right rotation and place it above the plane and then adjust this scale factor here to get the right size. Next just give your sculpt a new material and set up the generated input coordinates with those, we won't have to bother with the normalization of our height map, because the very top will be 1, and the very bottom will be 0. Separate the components, grab the Z component and plug it into an emission node. When we now press render, we'll have our very own height map created within minutes. Before saving, it's important that you check the color management though, because we have to use default and not the filmic or any other view here. By the way, this is a simple way to just create height maps, color maps, roughness and maps of any object basically. So just go ahead, grab your favorite Blender creation, create a few PBR maps, and scatter it on a plane like this. I mean, of course you could also just use a particle system, but come on, it's really old school, am I right? Okay, back to our mud material. For the roots, I'm finally going to use the full version of Scatter, because I want them to be able to overlap. I'm just gonna add in the node groups, Scatter Append, and the one with the subtle title, Insert Image Textures here. In there, I'm gonna set up the roots that we created as the alpha slot number one, 
Of course, you can use more slots for different textures, but like I said in the beginning, your node tree will blow up fast. Like, really fast. So, you might not be able to pull that off. Remember, if your shader happens to crash, you can always switch back to single scatter. That will go a lot easier on your node tree. But I'm just gonna use one root texture here, and that should be fine. I hope. So, let's just select the right alpha channel and use these roads for our height map. Like I said earlier, I don't want the roots to go above the leaves, so I have to take that into account. I just subtract the alpha channel of my leaves from the height map here, and that will take care of that. Oh, it's important that you clamp this subtract node. Like always, I just have to scale the height map of the roots to make them more subtle, and add them to the material height map. Of course, you could also work the roots into the other channels, like the leaves, but I'm not going to do that for the tutorial. Now, that is this shader done. Like I mentioned throughout the whole video, you can always go more into detail, try some different stuff, go for different objects that you want to scatter. Just feel free to do anything you can think of. Also, the shader that I ended up with now is not polished at all. I didn't do a lot of adjusting to keep it short, and there's a more advanced, less structured version in the files that you can download. Actually, let me switch back to that one while I keep blabbering. It's still not perfect, but I think it's looking pretty good. So yeah, just go ahead and impress me with what you can do with the tutorial. I did my best to show you my workflow on how I approach creating materials and different approaches to the problems you face. Please let me know how accessible that is for you, because I'm just starting out with tutorials and I'd like to know how it works for you. I might come back to this shader and show you how to make use of the procedural creation in terms of creating parameters like wetness, puddle, count, puddle, size, variation, leaf count, stuff like that in a future tutorial, so let me know if you want to see that. But yeah, that's it from me, have a great day and see you around.